Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me for the segment, we have Benny Gradwall. He's a co-founder and CEO of Cognovi Labs, an artificial intelligence company at the intersection of machine learning and behavioral psychology. Benny, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Great to be here, Jill. Thank you very much. Tell us more about Cognovi Labs. Well, Cognovi Labs is, as you said, an AI company where we combine deep machine learning with behavioral psychology so our clients can really understand how their customers are feeling in the moment and what that means in terms of their decision making. Then we give them the tools to engage emotionally to drive the outcome. And how is this relevant to the Trade Talks audience? Well, it's relevant because of two numbers, 90 and 7. So uh, more than half a century of research have shown that we as human beings, we are not as rational as we think we are. In fact, 90% of decisions we make are made by the subconscious mind based on emotions. Seven means what the impact is of those emotional decisions. So research has shown that if a customer connects with a company, with a brand, with an idea in an emotionally strong, emotional way, they will buy seven times more. And that's really where we differentiate ourselves from other companies in the industry. When we analyze free-flowing conversation on social media, discussion forums, blogs, deep web, or from client conversations, we go beyond just the obvious in terms of what people are talking about and what the sentiments are, positive, negative. We actually measure 10 emotions in context, natively in, in foreign languages to understand the emotional undertone, and then map that through a proprietary psychological framework into intense scores, into behavioral uh, signals. Interesting. I never heard of the 97 uh, concept before. Thanks for sharing that. Can you give some examples where your technology was applied and the impact that it had? Yes, very happy to. Let me let me explain two of them. And, and what's important to remember is that very often the impactful information is really hidden from, from uh, plain view. Uh, one of them goes back to the early 2020. You might remember that when COVID started, nobody was talking about coronavirus. It was something which happens in China. At that time, we had an application on the Bloomberg Terminal called the Event Impact App. And what it did is it mapped and, and measured conversation around all the consumer companies in the S&P 500. And what happened is that in the third week of January into February, there were a lot of signals, red flags coming, showing that the consumer is changing behavior because of COVID. And one of them, a whole series day after day was around cruise liners. And so we, it wasn't very vocal, you didn't hear it, but emotionally there was an earthquake, like a rumbling before uh, an earthquake. And indeed, you know, two weeks later, the stocks collapsed 75% as we know now. now. So that's one example where you really have to listen not to what people say, but the emotional undertone. The other example is exactly the opposite where something happened and it was very vocal. And that goes back to Peloton. Uh, Peloton wasn't a client of ours, but we had a client who came to us uh, a year and a half ago saying, look, Peloton did phenomenally well during COVID because everyone was uh, you know, staying home and working from home and therefore they bought those stationary bikes. What's gonna happen when the vaccine comes and the world opens up again. And when you looked at Peloton's website, it was all about memberships. We have, you know, we are less expensive than the gyms. You get a discount. It was all about price. And interesting enough, when our technology analyzed free flowing conversation, online conversation on social media and discussion forums, there was an enormous amount of conversation around price. However, emotionally, nobody cared. That wasn't the reason why they bought a bike. They bought a bike because of the luxury, the social uh, status, because later on in the year, because of the classes. So by missing the real reason why clients buy the product, um, it would have helped, you know, by not missing it, it would have helped them really position themselves a little bit different. How do your clients engage with you? So we have a SaaS uh, product and professional services, and we really have two products. One is called the Explorer, and the other one is the Communicator. So the Explorer does exactly what I mentioned. It explores why somebody, a client, a customer buys the product. So if you're an auto company and you want to sell an electric car, are they buying it because of sustainability environment, because of high you know, gas prices, because of social status? What is the reason they're really buying it? The Communicator gives you the tools to be engaged emotionally in an emotionally relevant, emotionally intelligent way with your customers to drive that performance, that seven times performance. And so think about the communicator like a spell check or Grammarly for emotions. And finally, Benny, your mission statement is focused on social good. Can you explain how this relates to your technology? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So our technology, you know, obviously is applicable wherever human beings make decisions. And so it can do a lot of good. 
Uh, when we work with pharmaceutical companies, there's one thing which always comes up, which is really striking, which is that patients who have chronic diseases go to the doctor, get all the tests, get a prescription, and then what happens? Nothing. Six out of 10 never fill that prescription, and the four which do, half of them drop out within six months. And so uh, pharmaceutical companies come to us and say, hey, how can we change that? Because it's not just bad for their revenues, it's actually bad for society because in the US, 125,000 American lives are lost every year because of a lack of adherence to medication. And so when pharmaceutical companies come to us and say, look, we ask, we ask why people don't take medication and say, well, look, it's not covered by insurance or it's very costly. But then it turns out that when they change those programs and give it up for free, it doesn't make a difference. And when we come in, we see there are emotional blockers. There are reasons, emotional reasons why patients don't take the medication or doctors prescribe the wrong ones. And so we can change that by changing the communication the, uh, part of it. And that literally saves lives. All right, Benny, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you, Jill.